Okay, in the previous video, we created a Verilog uh, module for an adder, and then we packaged it as an IP, and then finally using our block diagram, we combined our IP that we had created with a Jinx system, and then wrote software for it to verify its functionality. Now let's go back and take a quick look at our Verilog code. So this was the Verilog code we started out with. And I find that I have A, that's 8 bit, B, that's 8 bit, and a sum together with a carry which makes up 9 bits. But I forgot to include a carry in. And it's possible that when you create a custom IP, you'll have to figure out, a, you'll, you might need to go in and edit your IP. So in this case, we'll, we'll say that we need we forgot an input port, so let's go ahead and add that uh, and see how to regenerate and repackage our IP. So in order to edit an IP that was created and packaged, we need to go ahead, right click and edit an IP manager, say OK, OK to overwrite. Okay, so here is our temporary project. Uh, what we're going to do here is basically add a carry in signal to this uh, design. Okay, so here let's go ahead and add our input carry. So I'll call it an input port and I will call in carry in CN as the input. And what we'll do is sum is A plus B plus the initial carry. So let's save that. Now we need to up, go ahead and update our uh, wrapper. Our wrapper basically had clock, A, B, and S. Now we just added an extra port called C in. What should go into that port? Let's say that bit number 16 of slev res 0 is assigned as the carry in. Okay, so let's save that. So now we have updated, updated our axi.v file. Uh, when we're done, we will be will now be ready to go ahead and update our IP, uh, synthesize it so that we know this is going to work. So let's quickly hit synthesis and wait for it to complete. So the synthesis is now complete. Uh, we don't want to implement it, so just hit cancel. Okay, so we just made some modifications. So let's go to customize and customize this in parameters. All those things that are not green, Let's make sure that we merge the changes. Um, and once everything is done, let's review and repackage our IP. Okay, now that our IP has been updated, uh, uh, this message should come up here saying, uh, this design should be upgraded. If we forget this, we can hit on report IP status, which would bring us down here to, it says it's incompatible IP data detected, upgrade IPs, select upgrade. So hopefully this has been upgraded, but let's make sure. Let's check the report of the IP status again. And all of the IPs are up to date. Once in a while, once you've, once you've edited the IP from your original project, from this project right here, once you updated the IP, uh, edited the IP, and checked the IP status, it says it needs upgrade. But once in a while, what you'll find is that those IPs are some for some reason locked. If that's the case, close your Vivada project, reopen it, and from tool menu go to report and report on the ip status and you can check the update and whatever is causing it to lock will should free up that lock uh, so now that everything is up to date uh, let's run uh, we need to generate the output products because now that the design block design has changed we need to go ahead and regenerate our output products this might take just a couple more seconds uh, depending on how big our design is. So our generation of output products was successful. Now say OK. Let's recreate the wrapper. So the wrapper is created. And let's hit generate bitstream so that it synthesizes the design, implements it, and does the bitstream right. So it's let, uh, we'll let it run the synthesis of the design. Okay, so the bitstream write is all done. Uh, so we should have an updated hardware. So let's do file, uh, export hardware, include the bitstream, say okay. Uh, 
remember that we had already created this before and we edited the hardware so clearly there's a hardware that exists so yes overwrite it uh, now let's launch SDK uh, say okay so here's my SDK module uh, oops came up with a warning saying that the hardware was updated don't uh, say yes I understand that the hardware is updated uh, one of the things we might have to do okay so it's uploading some of the stuff uh, let's regenerate the board support packages just to make sure that it brought in all the changes now if I go back and look at my original main.c let's go ahead and add a carry in bit to our result so let me do one with a carry in and one without so this will be without the carry in and this will be with one so let's see what our results look like before we can do that we need to upload the new bit stream to the board so let me power up the board uh, hit oops. hit design wrapper program okay FPG has been configured successfully uh, so this time let's go ahead and right click uh, run as launch on hardware you want to relaunch it sure and yeah, let's make sure our serial port is connected okay okay so the first sum is actually uh, not a carry enough one it's actually a is 1, B is hexadecimal 13, so A is 1 and B is hexadecimal 13. So let's find out how that much that comes out to be. So B is 1, B is 1, and A is hexadecimal 13, so 1, 3, uh, which comes out to hexadecimal 1, 4 converted to decimal is 20. So the sum is 20, and we're producing the result in 20. Ignore what the A and B's are here. Uh, I forgot to update those uh, when I ran the code. Next, let's look at A is 19, actually in decimal. B is 255 in decimal, and there's no carry in. So the results should be 255 plus 19 should be 274. And finally, the next one, we added A is 13 in hex, which is 19 in decimal. B is FF in hex, which is 255. So the same as before, but this time we added that one extra value for the carry in. So the results should be one more, so which is 275. So here we have it. Uh, we've shown that our adder actually worked uh, and we made the change with the carry in and we verified that the change has also uh, uh, worked. So that, that is how you edit your IP.